Today we'll be making a fire sword, and it looks like this. I botched the recording a bit, but I made a quick cheat sheet for you guys, so you should be able to follow along just fine if you use it. Take a quick screenshot of this so you can follow along, and let's get started. We're going to start with the hilt. So you can do this by using the extrude and scale tools to quickly block out the rough shape of the hilt. If you want to spend more time on this, you're perfectly, perfectly free to do this. So then use the loop tools to cut the hilt into fourths, and then select half of it, and then delete it by vertices, and then select the remaining half and delete that by vertices. Then you can go in and apply a mirror modifier and mirror it across the x and y axes. Continue to block out the rest of the shape of the handle, and then bevel the edges of the grip. You can then go on to bevel the rest of the shape, but be careful when doing this or else your sword will appear too round, but it can add some nice depth to the model. This next step requires that the mirror modifier on the hilt be applied, so make sure to do that before progressing. So you can add a sphere into the scene by pressing Shift A, scale it up, and then scale it any way you want. Then bring it into edit mode, delete the top face by vertices, so you have one face left at the bottom, inset it, and then delete the center face, and then extrude it, and then use the loop tools again to make, I don't know, rings on the top and bottom. This will help it shade smooth better and have less artifacting issues. Okay, so now go into modifiers and apply an array modifier and then set it to around 0.5 on the z-axis. This is going to vary between runs, at least it's varied for me between runs, and you're just going to have to set it on your own. Then tab into edit mode, and then rotate it to 45 degrees on the y-axis, and again, you're going to have to figure out a way to set it so they're stacked on top of each other. So then apply the array modifier, not apply it, set the array modifier to something high so it can get all the way to the top of the hilt, and then apply a shrink wrap modifier and then target the hilt. Once you do this, then it'll allow it to perfectly mesh with it. Then apply a solidify modifier so it has a bit more depth. And this is optional, but you can go in and add a subdivision subsurface modifier and that'll smooth everything out, but it's not necessary unless you're gonna do a close up of the hilt. Then you want to duplicate the grip and then scale it down with Alt S in edit mode. And then this will allow it to scale further down on the size of the first so you get a nice overlap between them then you can join them together so you can material set a material for them at the same time then you'll want to go and search for a leather material just a picture of leather and you can search a leather texture leather material picture of leather into google and download just try a bunch of times until you get a correct image but find one that's roughly high resolution and looks how you want it to. This is all up to personal preference, so you could pick a rug if you wanted for, for, as this texture. Then take your file and then just drag it into Blender. Then connect the texture's base, the color to the principal BSDF space color, and then drop in a color ramp between the two. And this is just a personal thing. I like it gray instead of brown. Um, then anyway, Add a noise texture and then plug it into the normal of principal BSDF. And then add a mix RGB and add that between those two. Then add a bump and then set that to height where it plugs in. And then add a Musgrove texture and plug that into the mix RGB. So you'll want to set the noise's scale to about 123. You're going to want to set its detail six to 16, roughness to about 0.63, and then same with the Musgrove. You want to set its scale to 6, detail to 16 dimensions to 0.8, and keep the negativity as is. And for the bump node, you're going to want to have its strength be 0.213, and yeah. So go into the UV Editor tab and select all of the grips, and then go up and then press the UV, and then press Smart Project. Go to the left side of the screen and scale it up a ton, and then scale accordingly to how rough you want your texture to be. Now we can begin to create the material of the metal section of the blade. So we drop in a noise texture, and then we can connect it to the normal on the principal BSV yet. And then you can drop in a mix RGB on top of it and put it right in the middle. Then add a bump node in between the two. Then duplicate the bump node and connect it to the mix BSDF, and leave their strengths at one for now. 
add a color ramp between the noise and bump node. And you can adjust this however you want. It really doesn't matter. It's just, again, personal preference. But I found what's on screen to be roughly the best. So go ahead and drop in a Musgrave texture below the noise texture. And then add another mix RGB and put that between the noise texture and the color ramp. Once you've done that, connect the Musgrave texture to the color 2 section of the mix RGB and connect the factor, factor node on the noise texture to the bump on the bottom. I'll connect it to the height. Now seems like as good a time as any to save because we've gotten a good chunk of work done. So next you're going to want to start um, putting in the correct values. So we're going to start with changing the noise texture to about 27. And then we're going to change the details to 16, scale to 6 on the Musgrave texture, and then details to 16 on it too. And then you can go in and fine adjust the color ramp now that you have more precise details. And make sure to turn the strength on the second bump down to around 0.18. So now we can go in and edit the principal BSDF. Make sure to turn metallic all the way up and adjust roughness until you're happy. You can add a noise texture to connect to roughness, so you can get some like stains, not quite stains, like grease marks on it. So that sometimes looks nice. And you can see in rendered mode how well our stone sword is coming out. So now's a good time to start working on the emission source of the blade. So we can start this by creating a sphere and just add it into where you want the blade to come out of the hilt and bring it, try to center it right in the middle. And you want it to be thin on the Y axis if you've been following in the same orientation as me. It might be the X axis for you. So then we can go in and definitely want to change your render engine to cycles because volumetrics do not display an EV. So then we can go to particle settings and we add um, 50,000 particles and with a lifetime of, I think, 17. You might want to look on the cheat sheet for that one. But as you can see, it's just falling. It doesn't make a blade. It just falls down in like a little short cone. And to fix this, we can add a wind force. And the simple solution is very, very elegant. We bring the wind force right up underneath the emission source, and then we set the force of it to 379. This worked best for me. And now this will create a blade. So the next problem we're going to run into is that we need to shape the blade because it's just kind of a cone right now that's spreading out. And if you know what a sword looks like, you would know that that's not what they look like. So let's add a cube into the scene. And we'll use this as a collision object. So move it to the side of the sword and bring it into data mode and grab the top and bring it into a pointed tip on the where the um, particles end. So then we're going to use the same trick we used for the hilt. We're going to cut it in half, delete the vertices. We're going to mirror it across the y-axis, I think. Might be wrong. Just pick whichever one does that. And then go in and add another um, loop cut and bring it to the edge of the blade. And at the top, move it in on the y-axis and make it into a point. So next, you're going to want to bring the bottom section out to be level with the top. And you can use this by activating the snap tool, that little magnet in the top corner. And you just select the vertex. And now you've got this whole thing. So apply the mirror. And now we set the origin to the 3D cursor. And then add another mirror modifier. And then we get it on both sides. So apply the mirror modifier again, bring it to edit mode. And then you can extrude the interfaces and use the snap tool again. And then you have a blade collision object. So now we actually need to add collision physics, which is pretty simple. All you just have to do is bring it into its um, physics settings for and then just change its permeability until you have a nice setting for your sword. Now it's time to start working on the domain. You can start by adding a cube into the scene and then scaling it up to fully encompass the particles. Once you've done this, you can go into the physics settings again and add a fluid setting, then set its type to domain, and it'll make everything catch on fire. This isn't a problem yet. So go in and set the resolution divisions to 300, set the reaction speed to 4, the flame smoke to 0.2, keep vortice as is, set maximum temperature to 1, and minimum temperature to 0.5. And then go into cache, and then set its type to all, and you should be done from there. So go ahead and press the bake button and then 
go to about 15 frames. And then it'll give you this nice little pre-res of the fire. And you have to be in solid view for this. So go in ahead and play that so you can see it. And But you'll notice if you go into render view, it doesn't appear. So go into shading and make a new material and add a principled volume. From there, you're going to want to go and change the black body intensity to its maximum. And then connect a noise texture to the black body tint. Oh yeah, and you want to change the density to 170. So add a color ramp between the noise texture and the BSDF, and just copy as I do. Go ahead and change the temperature to 6,500 so you get a nice vibrancy. And now you can go in back to the color ramp and adjust the color settings until you get a result that you like. I don't quite like this, so I'm going to go in and change it. Now all you have to do is go in and bake all of the physics for the fire, which is simple enough. Just go back to the physics tab for the domain and bake it again. And then go off and start rendering, and then you'll be done. Hope you enjoyed.